over the uh, the calibration. So um, now remember the um, the log in. If you want to log in, is two three five zero oh, two. Okay, so two three two. Enter and hit OK. Okay, now if you power it off, that'll erase everything. And if you don't power it off, you just hit log off, and then that way someone can't come in and change. So let me go over a few of these things just to point them out. So status takes you to uh, status screen, which is our final pressure, oil pressure. Here's where your uh, shutdown and restart are, how many uh, cycles per hour the compressor started, current run time. So the last time it ran, we only ran it for a couple of minutes. Um, total run time is five hours, which there's also a Hobbs meter over on the electrical panel too. Okay. And then purification, uh, th the first one is the cartridge life. Okay, and that's based off of the uh, Monitor 42. Uh, so that's, it's 98, it's brand new filter. Okay, the second one is a chamber life. So the chamber itself has a lifespan because it actually, because it's you know, holding pressure. And so um, if you do the calculations, it comes out to like 14,000 hours or something like that. So longer than we'll ever have to worry about. But it does give a calculation here so that um, if the machine got a lot of use, you could actually, um, once the filter chamber life went down, you could purchase your the replacements. And, so. uh, and like I said earlier, anything that's grayed out is not used. It's an optional. Okay. Uh, status of the ACD drains. The ACD is those solenoids on the compressor. So this is just given the status of those um, when they drain. So they drain at 15, 16, 17, 18. They drain a, a minute apart. Okay. And then our CO monitor. Okay. So, uh, so right now it's reading the temperature of the cell. There's no pressure because it's not running. And we got it's just picking up a slight PPM on that. So. Um, also, you'll notice that uh, we have the set point for the alarm. Okay, they come standard as 10. That can be changed. If the customer wants to bring that down to five part per million, they can get in and you can change that. And also you've got the remaining life and that's of the cell. The cell itself has a life too. So as it degrades over time, the remaining life will go down in which point uh, as the end user, they would be able to purchase a new cell and calibrate it and set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to home and just come back over. Alarm screen, this is going to be a current alarm. So if there was an alarm or warning initialized, you would go to alarm screen and it would give you a full description of what uh, what the problem was. Okay. Okay. Alarm history, this is kind of nice because you can go back and, and look at the uh, history and you can actually move this to get get the date so you can see uh, of course we're doing excessive motor starts because we're doing the startup but you can look back and see some of the different settings uh, co faults and final pressure so this is all stuff from today high co uh, if you go back all the way it'll be back to uh, back at the factory they test everything so back uh, in April that was their test so this is nice having the alarm history. Uh, maintenance on the maintenance uh, button. Okay, this is giving you the uh, maintenance uh, intervals. Uh, it's either 500 hours or one year. And most fire departments don't run 500 hours in a year. So we, uh, we base it off of a one year. And then uh, when they do their maintenance uh, in a year, then this is where they reset their maintenance timer is, uh, is in here and they've got you can actually uh, gives you what what the expectations are for that maintenance cycle and this is all in the manual also but it's in the manual okay. um, so that's in maintenance um, touchscreen setting that's where you set the uh, set the time and date you've also got your PSI and your Fahrenheit again if it goes to Canada you can change that to bar and to uh, Celsius okay. Um, over here you've got compressor information. This is very important. In fact, I always take a picture of this <laughs> before because um, it's got the program number of the PLC and the HMI. It's got the serial number of the compressor, which is important if you order parts or call for any information you want to have that serial number. This is the compressor, the block number. So this is the block of the compressor. It gives us that. 
uh, and then the model number of the compressor. And then this this is uh, on the on the PLC. Um, this is the uh, 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 IP address. Um, this if it was connected to the internet, this is stuff IT department gets into. Okay. Contact information, Power Norfolk. Okay. Uh, diagnostics menu. The only reason you'd be in here is if there's a problem and you can't get the compressor running. When you're on the phone with Bauer Technical Support, they may want to have you come in and give the readings. And so they may ask you what the inputs are or what outputs are initialized. Okay, so rather than have to climb up into the electrical box, you can do it from here. Uh, configuration menu. Okay, so it's a breathing air compressor. It's got the model number. It's a standard system. This is the, uh, the, the PLC as a CNT-133, and then the contact information, Bauer. Okay, operating parameters, here's where we'd shut down and restart pressure. So if we wanted to change that, we just touch that. Okay, it's 6,600, so if you wanted to go to 7,000, you could hit 7,000 and change that to 7,000. Okay, we'll go back to 66. Maybe the most common change would be a restart pressure. So a customer, if they're starting at 7,000, um, if it's the restart is set at 6,000, it may be cycling too much. Okay, so then the customer may say, can you bump that down for us? So, so and this is all stuff that you guys, you know, when you're doing your, your final walkthrough with them and you're doing the run through, they're like, oh man, could we, you know, you know, change those settings? You guys could do that. You know, yeah. wouldn't have to wait till it got out in the field. So this is um, overrun time limit. So that's eight hours of continuous run. So if the compressor was running for eight hours, if there was enough fuel, um, <laughs> that would shut off on an alarm for overrun, okay? Um, ACD settings, again, these are all factory set. No reason to be in here. Just showing you where they are. Okay. Uh, device configuration, okay? And this is where we got into uh, turn off the gas sensor. Okay, we've re-enabled it now that we've got pressure. Okay, uh, there's purification. So the purification, it's a P5 Securus. Again, nothing, uh, nothing you can change in here. Okay, this is where you you can't uh, override that because without the uh, unlock code. So no no reason to even try to unlock that. Um, temperature sensors, there's none used on this. Okay, pressure sensors, uh, we have a final pressure and a oil pressure, and those are enabled. So, so really the only reason to be in the devices is if you wanted to turn off your CO monitor in order to test run the system without that alarm going off until you got pressure into it. Okay, so we'll go back to the home page. Okay, again, compressor information and contact information. And I, I I tell the operators, if you ever get into something and you, you don't like where you're at, easiest way is to go home. Just hit the home.